Man, I got all the famous bitches say I'm delicious. I'ma have all you motherfuckers lay in a ditch. I'ma kill all you rappers. I'ma aim with precision. They was rocking with your ass till they made a decision. So you clicked on the video. Clearly, you're here for a reason, and it better be to watch this movie. You should probably watch the movie. That's all I'm going to say. That, that, that's the big thing. Okay, it's a very good movie. Um, a lot of spoilers in this video coming up. So that's all I'm going to say. If you haven't seen it already, this movie is better than the original that came out before it. Honestly, if you want, if you haven't seen the original, you don't need to. It happens after the events of Shrek, which I'm sure you already know what Shrek is. If you don't, you can still even watch without even knowing Shrek. This is, in my opinion, a good standalone movie. Uh, you can watch with any prior knowledge of anything. So it's very well done. I would check it out. However, if you need some more convincing, and you don't mind some spoilers, which frankly, I would say a lot of stuff that happens in the show is kind of predictable. Um, stay around, and I, I might be able to convince you to watch this kid show. Because, I mean, it, it is a kid show, but it's really good. So, if you're an OG that stayed, hi, my name's Blue. And, uh, Puss in Boots, in my opinion, The Last Wish, uh, is probably one of the best Pixar movies that has been made in forever. And th that's not Pixar, my bad. <laughs> Pixar. <laughs> DreamWorks movies that have ever been made in a long time. And that's because, uh, I believe... Of the effort that they put into it and also trying to revive what cinema can offer for um, people especially since a lot of things have gone to like mainstream uh, streaming services like let's say uh, Netflix or uh, Disney Plus and all that other garbage I do think with certain things there's just a better in immersion when you're watching it in the theater versus at home and I think a lot of movies have gone downhill and it felt very sloppy almost like they're just conveyor belting it like it it's not a work of art which I think a lot of films should be uh, for example, like if we talk about the movie Red, uh, or Turning Red, it's okay, it's not the worst. Um, but I do think that, that would have done a lot better if it was in theaters, and, and I think it feels like there's not a lot of heart behind that either, versus this movie, which every frame reminds you that someone really put all their, their might into it. Now, if I were to describe some other movie or a vibe that this reminded me of, at least related to uh, DreamWorks, I would say it's like the first Imagine Dre, or uh, not... Not Imagine Dragons! No! Fuck! How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. Not Imagine Dragons. I... No. No. <laughs> so, it, it's like that where there's a lot of dark things that are within the realm, but um, it's not afraid to also take you on a whimsical ride, and it is a kid's movie, but it doesn't mean it, it's afraid to stray away from harder topics, which I think is a good thing. Uh, I think most of the best uh, shows that have been around do this. Uh, you can even look at Disney. Uh, one of my favorite shows is uh, Monsters, Inc., and I think that has some darker tones in it, too, frankly. So, it, it, very, very well done. Very well done. So, why am I making a whole video preaching about a kid's show? Mainly because I think it's one of the best when it comes to as an animated movie for kids. It does all the check marks perfectly. It's not just another brain-dead, stupid kids movie, which I would say DreamWorks dropped the ball when they started doing Boss Baby. That was horrible. I mean, I think marketing did okay, but, like, it started turning to a soulless cor corporation like everything else. And ever since Spider-Verse came out, DreamWorks has been coming back on with a studio that we have and just pumping out the best works. And it feels like there's heart behind it. It feels like what they're actually doing matters and uh, they, they care about it. So between like, you know, a little bit of a fight for me wanting things to come back to theater and people actually wanting a quality experience when seeing a movie, because let's be real here. If you, if you want to watch something that's not as much quality and you still have a good time. We have YouTube, we have Twitch, we have TikTok, man. We don't need this stuff. And, and the statistics show it. The demographics show it. And if you think that's not right, man, let's just, I'm just saying, well, why are you watching the video? That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. But, um, what I would like to say is that I think there is a place for them. And I, I would like it to come back because uh, I, I think streaming services have done uh, the work of uh, Cinemax injustice. So let's talk about that. Uh, jumping into it first, animation. Uh, animation is really good in this. Uh, a lot of it is actually slower frames, and uh, a lot of people don't really understand. Like, uh, a lot of people don't really get that if you don't understand animation. Um, a lot of like, let's say like, uh, Pixar stuff, right from Disney. The the try to uh, with their uh, CGI make things a lot more crisp and smooth, and that's good because a lot of times back, you know. And like, let's say the 80s and 90s, even before then, things weren't as smooth. You know, they're, they're still a little bit more like uh, choppy because you know, it was all drawn out. And then, you know, the smoother things got, you're like, wow, that's butter. But um, I think there is a little bit of beauty behind seeing things that are a little bit more choppy because the frame rates make it look a little bit more sharp. And uh, it, it definitely sticks out. That's what a lot of anime does. And obviously, when you see anime fights, 
you know you're in for something good. That's that's why you see them on TikTok compilations all the time because we think visually they look sharp and cool and badass, you know, and they are. So uh, that's why I think the animation uh, is really good. If you've seen uh, Enter the Spider Verse at all, this is the same exact art style, same exact, uh, very well done. They also increased the saturation, which I think was a uh, was an interesting choice. But um, moving on, characters. I think the characters are also some of the best that um, have been in any DreamWorks shows to begin with, ever. Um, I don't think the are the uh, no. I honestly, they have some of the, the these some of the best. Um, all the characters in this did not bore me, not a single one. Maybe there's one that I could say was slightly generic, but every single one of them I thought like could honestly go in like the Hall of Fame of like some of the best. DreamWorks movie characters of all time. T to give you an idea, I thought the last Puts in Boots, which I like, the last Puts in Boots was meh, because the main villain, we kind of saw a mile away, even if he didn't, you could at least guessed it, and I wouldn't say he was all that cool. He was just, I don't know, he's just, he was just an egg, man. Like, he was just an egg. The villains in this one are way more unhinged, though, and I think there's a lot more behind them, too, for a depth, so I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, but the one, and there's like I said, spoilers, 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 spoilers. Um, one of them that I really appreciated, which I'm sure everyone really, that's the reason they kind of got into it. I know that's why I want to watch it, is uh, the wolf. There's this wolf, which, I, before I even get into it, basically, even, it's even said in the, in the character names, so I don't know why. Uh, but basically, it's called Big Bad Wolf. That's not actually who he is. So he's not the Big Bad Wolf, so just get that in your mind, but just for sake of right now. Uh, the Big Bad Wolf character that you see, um is this guy with two sickles and he, he looks really menacing really just disturbing because he's a bounty hunter he's trying to find and take down uh, puss uh well what happens with the story is puss you know it's after shrek he's still taking down people doing all these adventures and uh this guy basically almost kills puss and he's on his last life um he you know cats have nine lives he's on his last one and his bounty hunter is after him and he's the, basically the first one that puss can't defeat right away and uh he basically gives up retires for a bit well, it's as in the title suggests, right? There's this big wish. There's this last wish that he has to, uh, that they can find. It's like the wishing star, right? Um, so uh, he's like, oh, if I go there, I can get my lives back. Well, all these other people that are going after it. Like, for example, Goldilocks and Three Bears. Um, Kitty Softpaws jumps back in. And there's a new character, which is this dog. And it's really cute. You know, I, I, it, it kind of seemed bleh, bleh at first. Like, oh, great. Here's another sidekick character. It, you kind of can assume what happened. I, I'm sure we've all seen that generic. But it's, they did it well. They, they actually felt good. Well... That wolf character falls on the whole time, and he's just such a badass. Like you, the, the menacing feeling was almost perfected. If if you, I, I would argue he's probably the worst villain in all of DreamWorks, all of DreamWorks history. He has to be one of the coolest villains, hands down. The only thing that was done dirty to him was he didn't get enough screen time. That is it. So without me uh, spoiling uh, too too much, let's let's keep going. So, um, Puss Puss was done really well. And the thing about Puss that's really hard about these movies is, like, you gotta make him interesting and not always just a badass. Uh, and that's a little hard for, like, a kid's show. But frankly, frankly, I think if they did push an envelope, with the, which they did at times, um, I, I think kids enjoy that more. I, I think, like, what they should have done is just kept the attitude that they had with him during the original Shrek 2 and then um, kept going because I, I like him as a badass. And I think most people like, you know, Puss being all, let's go, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool. One thing that a lot of people um, didn't really see coming though, and I thought it was really good, is uh, there is animated blood. In the first one, there was a little bit, but it was more actually from like uh, characters that didn't actually have like red blood. It was like fake blood, basically. Um, for example, like, uh, what do you call it? Humpty Dumpty does a little prick on his finger and you see like yellow blood come out, right? Uh, but, you know, it's a yoke, so it's like, oh, funny. And this though, um, when Puss, before, you know, he retires, or retires for at least a little bit before, you know, we go on the big adventure, he gets attacked by the wolf, and he gets cut above his head, and you see blood just go down his, like, his forehead, and that's kind of heavy for a PG movie, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of heavy, but, um, it did it so well, and I think it's something that a lot of kids still need to realize, because, like, people have gotten cut before, they've gotten bruises, they know what this stuff is, and it, they've done a really good job without, uh, making adults and kids feel like complete idiots, it's like, these guys have swords. Of course something dangerous is going to happen. You just, you know, we, we got to be ready for it. I think they did a really good job with that uh, without making it uh, almost perverted in, like, the the way that the uh, blood and uh, gore elements were introduced. Oh, yeah, there is some gore. 
And uh, the, the cussing, uh, they, they see, I think, hell and crap a few times, right? So, like, you know, they, they are not afraid to do that. And I, I thought uh, it went... The, the times that they did use it, too, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. I remember my my little sister came with me, right? Um, I actually, um, in that video, I don't want to show it because my family, you know, they're in the picture. But basically, afterwards, uh, I, I dressed up all nice and Tasha dressed up all nice. And uh, I wore the glasses and my, my grandma and my mom and my little sister all went. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm like, may I please have five tickets to Puss in Boots? Last wish. That kind of thing, right? And I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was cool. But, um... It, it my, my little sister even during the movie she's like oh, they said crap <laughs> you know it was it was cute but um yeah it is for a kids show it's definitely more mature uh this movie deals a lot and i mean a lot though with death and gore and i think that's another reason why for a kids show it, it went back into how to train your dragon vibes where like it's not afraid to talk about that stuff or delve into it deeper uh let, let's let's speak about Okay, just to give an example, I hate doing this, but spoilers, spoilers. There's a moment where one of the characters, which is Jack Thornton, right? Uh, big Jack Thornton. He's, uh, you know, the, from the nursery rhyme. Well, he's chasing after uh, Puss, and he's one of the funniest characters. I think I think they did a great job with this dialogue. Well, he has this, um, they meet up, right, as they're trying to get the Wishing Star, and uh, they they're have this map to get the Wishing Star, and they're trying to chase down Puss because he has it. Well, he takes out his shotgun, he has unicorn horns that go in him. Well, he aims them right at Puss, right? Shoots and it hits one of his men because he has all his men with him. Hits the man and he's like, "Whoa, you hit me!" Boom! Like explodes into confetti. Like their flesh just turns into fucking confetti. And then just all that's left is their clothes. And it is just without being gruesome, it is as gruesome as you can get in a kids show, really, in my opinion. Like maybe what would be worse if if they turn to like like I don't know gummy bears and explode or something like that. But like it was. Like you could tell, these these they died. They're dead. So it was uh, it was very good. It's very well done. I I, I appreciated it. Um, because clearly that happened. Or like there's some other moments where like people go into like God. Uh, there's a, there's this final fight. And there's like a border. And when you go into it, you literally just go like you zap from existence. That was kind of traumatizing. Um, there's another one where like, people fall down a bridge and look like they fall straight into hell. That was kind of scary. Um, I think there's a moment where the, the, what was that? They open up the map and they, like they're uh. Their path changes, so it looks like they're going into hell. Like, there's, there's a lot of dark imagery, but um, again, they handle it well, and they do it with some still comedic fashion, so that you can tell what's going on. It drives the story forward and the weight, but it's still for kids. It clearly is still for kids. And if they wanted to, they could go further, and they didn't. And I think I think because they didn't, I'll, it makes it better. The way they, they articulated all of everything with the, the plot was really well, really well done. Let's get into some darker stuff, though. So again, like I said, Puss is being chased down by this wolf dude. Um, well, and I'm not going to spoil... If you, I want you to watch. I'm not going to spoil what the wolf dude is. Um, because... He may not... Yeah, yeah. But, basically, he's being chased down again. Or at least he thinks so. And he's having PTSD. And he has this friend that um, he meets at the uh, place where Puss retires. And, uh, you know, the friend, this little dog, follows him around. And he's like, I want to be a therapy dog. And he's just all positive. While Puss is kind of all negative. He's he's kind of like... It's kind of switching the, the places where in the original film, it's like, oh, here's Humpty and here's Puss. And now... Puss is kind of like Humpty, where he just doesn't want to be with anyone. This is my dream, my solo thing. I work alone, kind of thing. And then there's, um, you know, the dog that wants to keep with him. Kind of like how Puss did the same thing. Well, he, he's running, right? And this, I remember this is where I teared, I teared up. I, I actually did. I teared up at a, at a fucking kid's show. He's running this force, and he, he, he sits down, and he's like, he's hyperventilating. And this is like for a whole minute. He's like, <sighs> and it was terrifying watching this, like, for me. For me. So, like... You know, and maybe it's just because, you know, I, I, I feel that, you know, I, I empathize. Um, I, I, I sympathize. So, um, you know, then the dog comes, finds the puss, and he lays his head on his lap and just slowly, they slow their breathing, they come back together, and then, you know, they, they start talking. But that bonding and that, that slowdown from an actual, like, again, from PTSD, uh, PTC, a panic attack, that was very well done. And I appreciate every moment of it. So I, I, I'm glad that they, uh, they did that. And um, honestly, I want to see more of that in, in just kids shows in general. Because the thing is a kid show, like, should, I mean, it should be for kids, but it should also try to teach them something along the way, too. And a lot of them don't. A lot of them is just garbage information. <coughs> Coco Melon. But I'm just saying, like, a lot of it's garbage. And the fact that they didn't want to do that here, I think that's awesome. 
So let's keep going. Um, the Romance Kitty Soft Paws is back. I'm glad they didn't drop it. They actually made Kitty Soft Paws, not just another. Oh, I'm another answer of a Mars Fit cat. I'm just gonna be here because because we need to be have another cat in here because it's about kitties. Yay! That's what the last film felt like, and it was cringe. It was kind of dumb. It was nice because it made Puss's character better, but it didn't feel like she was her own standalone character. Nobody really gave a shit. Let's be real. In this movie, Kitty Soft Paws was done really well. Really, really well. She actually felt like she had some trauma. She felt like she actually had some character development. She felt like she was her own individual. Instead of just like, here's another cat character. No, she, she felt like she was a supplement towards um, Humpty Dumpty in the first one, if anything. And the only, the only things that actually anyone even cared about, really, was that she was a love interest to Puss. And that she got she was declawed. Which, that was good. That was good. But, like, that's it. Like, dude. Um, I guess you also say Puss. But, I mean, like, I don't know. That wasn't anything great. And, honestly, Puss, I, I think it would have been cool if he saved himself. But, whatever. 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 My point is, it was just kind of like, really? Um, in this one, she she does feel very fleshed out and uh, well done. And uh, I, I think she's she's actually a badass in this one. So, um, I, I appreciate it. So again, I, I think it does go into some other topics, and one uh, that I want I want to make sure I don't forget about is um, the importance of life, and that's really what I'd say the main message of this whole movie is. Uh, Puss kind of starts not taking he, he 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 starts feeling it and not taking for granted his life um, until the very end uh, because you know he's he only has one life, and that that, that kind of hits him quickly. And I think it's very important for kids, too, because, like, I know, um, at least when I was younger, like, I was thinking, like, you know, I got all this time ahead of me, but, I mean, what happens if, you know, what, what happens when I do die? And I think understanding death as a kid is it's kind of scary, especially since a lot of adults don't really even talk to them about it. It's like, oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And I think I think actually delving into this and, like, having this mindset where it's like, it's not so much you got to worry about death. It's more that you got to just worry about living. And I think that was a great topic, especially for kids. Uh, they, they don't do that all the time, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of them for doing that. Um, dark moment, though, that I really love, and they keep going to dark topics, was, like, the dog. Um, the dog, I'm not going to spoil other things, but basically he gets traumatized, and the whole time he's just chipper about it. Very good thing to also show for kids, you know, when bad things happen, let's try to stay positive about it. That's also really good. And then the villains, one of my favorite moments, probably my favorite character of all of it, was um, Jack Thornton, big Jack Thornton. Because uh, in this, he's little Jack Thorne, and this, he's like big Jack Thorne. Because I don't want to be little. It's it's funny shit. But the whole time, he's just like a sociopath, and he's very soft spoken. You know, he's just he's just a little soft spoken, nice guy. But he says like some of the darkest, evilest stuff, and it's it's great. It's just it's hilarious. I love it. I love every moment of it. Um, and he seems like a normal dude too when he speaks, but like, he's just a sociopath, and it's hilarious. And um, there's a point which again, spoiler. Um, there's this uh, Jimmy Cricket that he uh, has out of his box of magical stuff because. When he gets the wishing star, he wants to make sure everything like is, you know, all, all magical, and he, he wants uh, to be the, the strongest magical being ever. So on his way, he brings his magic bag of goodies, and when things are going rough, he grabs out this Jiminy Cricket. And he's like, "I'll be your conscience," and, you know, hangs out with him. He's <laughs> the whole time the Cricket's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> and and uh, it was a Big Jack Thorns like, "Yeah, it's." It, it's really goofy and it, it's really hilarious especially for i mean the adults probably get more jokes than the kids but it, it was still funny but big bad wolf best villain of all time if you just gotta watch for one thing one thing to pull people in especially like let's say older people because a lot of people are gonna be like it's just another kid show and i'm glad i'm so glad i didn't just give up on it i'm that wolf character show them that clip there's tons on tiktok you haven't seen i'm just saying you're pretty you're probably missing out man you're probably not you're probably not you're a little detached right now look up just like the wolf character Okay, for Puss in Boots, or even just a trailer, you're probably going to be able to hook in your family that way. Um, just really good. But the only, my only complaint, because this is a really good movie, the animation's just, like up there, the writing is up there, the topics are up there. I mean, it's something that a kid and a, an adult can uh, watch together, and it's not just well, uh, it only has to be good for kids. I mean, it doesn't actually have to be a real good movie. People that say that. Are just idiots okay this was amazing and not only was a a good movie but it was also uh, obviously four kids so very well done but um the ending was a little generic in my opinion i think they could have done some other cool stuff um i'm not going to say anything but you know a little generic but other than that it was really funny all the characters were flesh out valuable and um the teaser at the end 
I'm not gonna say the teaser at the end just because like there's already a trailer out for it and people were kind of talking about it, but um, there's gonna be there's gonna be another Shrek basically. Uh, Post at the very end is like, oh well, before we gotta say hello to uh, an old friend of mine. Like, dude, that that is so cool, and, and I think they did it perfectly because they showed that okay, here's a high quality movie that we just did here. We're gonna go back to this franchise, and now you can trust us doing that because we gave you something high quality. A lot of other shows and franchises do this really wrong because they don't give you something high quality beforehand. Do a lot of low quality shit, and then they come back like, oh, here's another one you like, right? Here, here's other Star Wars. You really like Star Wars. And it's like, you fucked up the other shit. I don't want another one that's fucked up, you know? <laughs> I don't want you fucking up my, my childhood. But this, it clearly shows that they, they care about it a lot, and I, th I think it's going to go well. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, long story short, watch Puss some Boots. The last uh, wish. And if you don't, well, that's not very Sigma Giga Chad male of you. That's all I'm saying. Watch it. Get your family to watch it. Probably one of the best anime movies I've ever seen. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Okay? Be Giga Chad. Don't let Avatar, the, the thing of water, when, you know, Ticket Sales, because it's been in development for, for 10 years. Okay? They, they, they may say they care about it, they don't. Fuck them. Okay? You want puss in boots. You want the pussy in boots. Watch it. Love you guys. Smile. Keep your head up. And uh, my name is Blue Sign out. Bye guys. Watch the pussy in boots. Woo! Uh, subscribe yes. to Blue Digit. What? Do it now. Hello. You are a cow. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe to Blue Digit uh -huh. or else.